Okay, welcome to another CodeMotion webinar. In this occasion, we will be speaking about the UNO platform or UNO platform. Um, Jose Manuel Nieto will be our speaker uh, this evening. Uh, and first of all, welcome to all the attendees and thanks for watching this uh, webinar. And if you have any question or any inquiry, you can uh, write it on the chat or you can raise your hand. Uh, so, uh, welcome, Jose Manuel, and the floor is all, all yours. Okay, Francisco, uh, thanks for your introduction. Hello, uh, everybody. I'm Jose Manuel Nieto, and I'll be hosting this webinar to get you started with UNO Platform. I'm a senior developer working at Bravint and Go. It's a, it's a group of companies. It's not only Bravint, it's, it's Brintia and EDWork. And I'm all into .NET and, and uh, cross-platform applications. And I've been collaborating actively with the UNO platform team for more than two years. Uh, in this uh, webinar, I'll give you a brief introduction about UNO platform. Uh, for all those uh, that don't know much about it, and to provide a bit of context. Um, UNO Platform was born around six years ago uh, inside a Canadian Canadian company called Inventive. Inventive. Uh, I don't know if it rings a bell. It's a company uh, located in Montreal. And well, uh, they realized that it was almost impossible to get a proper cross-platform experience with the tools they had and decided to fix that. Uh, they took a revolutionary approach that was to take the Windows Universal platform. It's called the UWP. And as a model, uh, in the UWP as a model to replicate in the rest of the platforms. So the UWP platform is took uh, as a reference uh, for the rest of uh, applications, uh, for the rest of the platforms. This wasn't decided randomly, but deliberately. First of all, the Windows Universal Platform is well designed. It uses SAML, a language that is versatile and familiar to a lot of Microsoft developers. Also, because the Windows Universal Platform is powerful. And the last, but not the least, is because of the tooling ecosystem. Visual Studio provides a comprehensive set of designers and features to make the universal Windows apps development a super smooth experience. So they decided that an application could be built as a universal Windows application and later using some mechanism, uh, uh, some kind of mechanism uh, they had to invent. Uh, to convert it to a native application for the rest of the platforms. They did it and it works pretty well, so well that they even made it work into web browsers using WebAssembly. It became so popular for several reasons, but one of the most important is exactly that, WebAssembly. It runs on your browser. Another big reason is that the code you write is essentially the same for all the platforms. But let's get straight to the tutorial I've prepared for you. Since we don't, we don't have much time to develop uh, anything, I, and I don't want to bore you with a lot of, or a lot of technical details about who know, created this site in GitHub where you can find everything related to this webinar. 
it contains the documentation and the two applications that are developed as part of it. And inside the documentation folder, you will find the UNO platform folder with the tutorial in English and Spanish. Choose wherever it fits better. And uh, let's, let's get to the uh, tutorial. Uh, from now, uh, don't worry if you miss anything. It's there, you have it uh, ready to download, and uh, you can go to the site whenever you want. Uh, please write down the, uh, well, I'm thinking uh, it's a good idea to, to write it into the chat window so you can, uh, you can get it later. Let me go to the site. Okay. Let's go to the site. Here it is. Please write down the URL where it, uh, uh, all the contents are in this in this URL. This site contains the documentation with the tutorial I prepare for you. Uh, we'll go ahead uh, with the English tutorial that I've uh, placed on the desktop. I think you, you, you see it already. Okay, this is the navigation bar here with all the contents of the tutorial. Uh, first of all, um, this is our introduction uh, that happened. I have just said uh, currently, you know, platform supports the following uh, systems that are Android, iOS, Windows, and WebAssembly. And here they are the fundamentals that uh, the goal of you know platform is to maximize their productivity and so on. You just have to follow this content in order to discover everything. But in order to make it more interactive and uh, get advantage of uh, this, this webinar, I have decided to show you uh, live what is this uh, all about. The first thing uh, regarding the UNO platform, in order to get it started, we need, uh, it's, it's very uh, important that we install the UNO you know, platform solution templates. I will show you how to do it. It's very easy. First of all, we need to run Visual Studio. For now, it's good without code. And go to the extensions menu and manage extensions. OK. We have a browser here. We'll just have to type UNO you know, platform here. And after a few seconds, you will be presented with the results. You will see the UNO you know, platform solution templates. I have them installed already, but you just have to install them with a button here. And after uh, restarting Visual Studio, you will have the Visual Studio solution templates for the UNO you know, platform solutions. In order to create one uh, training solution for the webinar and show you how to do it, it's very, very easy. Um, I've, I come from, the, from a fresh start, starting Visual Studio. It's as simple as create a new project. And let me resize the window a bit. You can see the templates installed here. And if you don't find it in the first instance, you just have to type Uno platform, Uno platform here, and you will get two templates. One is the cross-platform app, and the second is the uh, uh, 
the library project that is advanced and we are not focusing on it in this course. But the first is, uh, is the one that we have to select. So just click next, type in a name, webinar, and create. After a few seconds, the solution will be created. It's scaffolding the, the solution. It may take uh, like 20 seconds or so. And after you are done, uh, take a look and it's being created. It's still getting ready. Okay, things are getting installed right now. Lots of packages, new good packages. Let's collapse it. And you will be presented with five projects. Uh, it's it, uh, and in, at the first uh, glance, uh, you will be a bit overwhelmed by the five projects. What does those projects mean? Uh, why five? Well, the, the reason is that we need a project for each platform that you know platform supports. So you have one for Android, one for iOS, one for the Universal Windows platform, and one for WebCentral. And finally, we have a, a special project that it, it, it is uh, shared uh, among uh, all the other projects. And it's a different kind of project. It's a shared project. In this shared project, we have the uh, the shared, well, <laughs> as you may expect, uh, the shared code, and mm, more interestingly, we have the views. So, where do we place everything that is shared among all the platforms inside this project, the webinar that shared project? Uh, we also have the views. As you can see, this is the main page. And in order to uh, preview what's in the, in the page, we have to open it. And this is a very important tip. In order to see what's going on and the designer, we have to uh, click on the drop down and select the UWP. After that, we have to close it and reopen it. Doing so will show the Hello World view. Um, as we selected a template that is only a sample, sample application, we are presented with a kind Hello World message. The, the interesting thing that uh, is very unique to you know platform is that in this designer we can uh, do whatever, and it will be updated accordingly. So if we change, for instance, for instance, we change the type, uh, the, the font size. Okay, let me do something. For instance, we create a stack panel and modify it, we can do whatever that is for sure that we will get a preview. And this is very nice uh, of, the, of the Universal Windows platform. But due to the uh, way it works, we only need to, uh, to, uh, to approach uh, the following the following life cycle uh, and it's very important that you understand this with Uno platform you uh, 
create the application to run on Windows first. So on Windows first, and you get all the tooling system that Visual Studio provides. After it's working on Windows, you can switch to another platform, to another system, if you, if you wish, and verify that it works the same it did in Windows. Uh, I will repeat it again because it's very important to, to get how Uno platform, uh, Uno platforms development life, cy life cycle works. So, in few words, you are developing a universal Windows application with a very big advantage. What you develop here that works in Windows and was originally uh, designed, designed to work over Windows gets the magic, magic process, the magic mechanism that converts this application in, a Android, in an Android application, in, a, in an iOS application, or a WebAssembly application. So the important thing is to notice that we are doing anything different for now, anything different than developing an application for the universal Windows app, uh, platform. So if I hit F5 and I run the application, not surprisingly, it will run over Windows. It takes a few seconds to, to build. Well, this is the very simple application we uh, modified from the template. And this is the, um, the usual way uh, we did with UWP, with the Universal Windows Platform. So what's the difference? The difference is that for the price we got this application, we also get the Android application. Please notice that this will take a bit longer. And okay, we get this Android application, the iOS application, and the WebAssembly application. In the meanwhile, I want you to show. I, I want. I want to show you that. Uh, okay, it's not ready to to run the application while it's launching the debug session. So we will have to wait until it's ready. It's deploying every every kind of uh, frameworks, SDKs, a lot of uh, stuff into the emulator. Okay, we here here we are. Here we are. This is the application running in Android. But most importantly, if I select to run the WebAssembly application, it's doing it, it's building it right now. We should get the very same application in our browser. Okay, it's loading it right now. Okay, here you are. This is the same application, no modifications in anything in the code, in the, in the builds, and the application is showing the very same interface in them. It's also possible to see the three applications running at the same time. Okay, this is the same application. I'm going to try a very interesting thing that is hot reload. If I change anything here, for instance, uh, I may change 
uh, font sizes or whatever. So I'll turn this. And I hit save. We can see that the, the, uh, the WebAssembly application has reloaded the content. And the Android application has done the same as well. The only problem, and um, it's, it's uh, for some kind of misconfiguration I have is the uh, universal Windows platform version of the application that didn't update. And that's, uh, that's surprising that we have no problem. We saw that the application is running we are making hot modifications in fact we may insert a button here and save the application and you will see that it will update accordingly this is a very important and uh, groundbreaking feature that allows us to see live updates and modify the appearance of our application uh, without stopping the debug session. Okay, uh, now that, that I've, uh, shown, I've, I've shown you uh, some interesting features that Uno platform has, and don't forget that all this is included in the in the tutorial document. Everything here. Uh, I will follow it a bit. Um, I have not mentioned that after creating our you know platform application from the template, it's very recommendable to update the packages. This is because uh, the templates use a fixed a fixed set of packages and the templates aren't updated so often like the packages the uno platform packages and uno platform is actively and uh, actively de developed um, it receives a lot of updates uh, the, the the improvements and the fix fixes the bug fixes are uh, very very constant um, uh, they the team uh, releases almost everything every packages every day and since it's a uh, work in progress right now although it's stable enough to use it for production uh, applications it's receiving a lot of updates and the development is pretty frenzy uh, right now even uh, that, that is especially true, uh, and you can notice it because the, all the packages are released as pre-released. And don't forget to check this tick here to include the pre-release packages in order to update your packages. As soon as you create a, a UNO platform from the solution templates, don't forget to update uh, the packages because you may discover that some specific bug is is not yet uh, is, is, is isn't uh, isn't there and it's it's fixed in our recent uh, version. Um, well, for those that uh, have not. Uh, developed under the universal Windows application, I mentioned uh, already that it, it is a very important uh, recommendation because, as I said before, the Uno platform uh, development life life cycle is based on this universal application. The SAML doesn't uh, need any modif modification. The, uh, the code is the same. So in short, in, you are developing a universal Windows application. 
So if you haven't developed any of the of this applications, it's a good moment to start. It's uh, the perfect timing. Uh, so I suggest you to to start right now studying the the SAML, how it works, the the specific uh, dialect that is the universal Windows application SAML. That is a it's slight it's slightly different from from the uh, for example the SAML forms uh, SAML or from the WPF SAML. But the basic elements inside the, the UWP SAML are, are common. Uh, you, won't, you won't notice uh, a big difference. For example, there are these controls like the, the text block, the, the button, the text box, list view, combo box, border, image, so any image. Check boxes, radio buttons, sliders, a lot of uh, controls that you uh, may uh, find in, in other platforms uh, are already uh, are here too. For instance, the, the layout uh, that defines how elements are placed on the screen. Uh, like the stack, stack panel, the grid, canvas. Uh, you can take a look uh, more uh, with, with carefully later. And of course, we have the bindings, the data template, the styles, everything that is in uh, in other frameworks like Xamarin Forms or WPF is inside this this. Universal Windows Platform, and of course in UNO Platform. Okay, let's get to the fun part of the tutorial. That is building a simple, uh, sample, simple application. That is the App One. The App One is a very simple application that will open here. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you mm, made any question. Uh, it's a good it's a good moment to ask any question if you want. Okay. In the meanwhile, let's open the first of the the applications. This is the first one. It's rather simple, rather simple. In order to follow it, I prepared a set of steps in which I make a summary of uh, we will doing, and I placed, I, up, I added uh, a link to the exact commit uh, that it, it's related to to the uh, to the step. So, if we go to the first application and we want to reply what I did in order to follow the steps, just go to this URL and clone the project. After that, you can see what I'm doing in each in in each step by going to the commit and checking it this commit to uh, to see what i did for example let's go to the first step this step let me go to the source tree application to check in the first step okay let me select the repo. Uh, this is in the repo. First application. Okay. Okay. This is the list. The history says, as, as you see, we have this coming here. We've added a view model. 
And if you follow the link, just open it and you will see what we did in, in this commit. You can see that I only added a view model. It's as simple as that. For example, if I want to go to, to the first step, okay, I'm checking out the first step and just reloading the application, we'll go back to the past where I started the, the sample and we will see what we did. I just added the view model. Okay, if we wanted to go to the second step, that is added reactive UI. We just have to go to, to this, ch checking uh, out this commit, this specific commit, we go to each step. Okay, what we did here, we added reactive UI. And in the third step, did something more interesting. What do, what did we do here? We created this layout. Okay, there is, there is a, a problem with the designer. If you don't see in the designer what, what you have, just, okay, this is the problem. You have to select here uh, the universal Windows version. And after you have done this, okay, the problem is that I didn't build the application. Okay, let's see if we if we rebuild the application, the designer should appear here. Believe me that it should work. It takes a bit to to build. You know, platform is a bit slower than regular builds because it generates the code for all the four platforms it supports. Okay, the build succeeded. And what do we have here? It's two. The zoom was too big. Okay, we just added this in the third third step. And the fourth step, you can follow every every step doing this. Okay, this drop down went to the. It has a, a problem is that this uh, combo box uh, usually goes to the correct value. If you don't see the SAML here, just uh, do what, what I told you before, just select the, the UWP and reopen it in order to see the designer. Okay. This is looking better and, and better. So, as you uh, may have plenty of time with the COVID-19 right now, uh, it may be a good idea to follow the tutorial and following the, the, the creation of this application, checking in, uh, uh, sorry, checking out checking out every commit ID and looking how it evolves. Okay, I would bore you with, the, uh, with all the steps. So I will go directly to the resulting application. Okay, let's reload it. And let's give Visual Studio a bit of time. 
let's go back to the UWP and reopen the main page. And finally, we should rebuild because the changes have, have, have been uh, so, uh, so big that the designer required us uh, to rebuild the solution. Okay, and after a bit of time, notice that the only thing you should matter the most is the compile time. Okay, here you are. This is the application, the basic application as it is. And you can see that the, the application is rendered directly without even uh, running it. And what if we had to, we wanted to to look at the uh, at the cart we we did in a separate SAML, it's rendered as well. You can see the the how you your application is going to look without even running it. But let's run it in all the in all the uh, in all the available well not iOS because I don't have an iPhone but let's try to run the application all the applications at, at once. Okay, this is just a warning saying that I have installed this application before. Okay. This is the Windows application. This is the WebAssembly application. And this should be the Android application. Okay. Even though my accent is not very good, uh, an image is worth a million words. And you see that the same application is running on the same, on, on different uh, platforms. And the most important thing about the WebAssembly version is that it's not running any on any tricks. This isn't a trick. And we can see the actual uh, the actual HTML that is rendered for our application. You can see that it's um, tagged with a lot of a lot of um, properties uh, that is needed for Unoc you know, platform to track the, each control and to do its magic. But it's plain HTML. It's not running any extension or any any server light or anything that uh, uh, is not considered native. It's it runs plain old HTML without any modification, and the behavior is the same in, in every application. If we go and delete one item, it's done the same, same way in each one of the applications, and it has the same behavior. For example, if I tap here to create a new item, it works the same in any platform. Okay, as I said, this application is detailed step by step in the tutorial and following the steps in the history, 
you will be able to understand everything that I did to get it working and you will understand how to do it for yourself. Okay, this is the simple app one and in the tutorial we have two applications. We have another one that is a more complex application. And in order to uh, go a bit faster and not to bore you, I'm sure you are uh, tired after all the day working, most of, of you. And I will uh, make a summary of this application. This application is created using a template. This template uh, I created for you has everything configured to get you started with a very generic application yeah, that you may use in any production ready environment. It's a, a line, of, line of business application and is pre-configured, as I said, for instance, with dependence injection using Brace, uh, services layer, and reactive UI. It also supports uh, the usual left navigation uh, uh, in a sidebar and as a plus, uh, it's uh, view model based navigation. It's a different navigation uh, of the two. I know the one, one is the view model based navigation and the other is the view based navigation. I recommend the view model based navigation. And uh, well, this, this template um, is ready. It's like a hello world, but it's, it's a bit more complex. And it, it, when you run it without doing anything untouched, you will get this, this window. Uh, let's load it for you to see. Okay, in the meanwhile, while it loads, it generates this application with sample sections and in each section you will um, you will find the very same content. It's a list of numbers from 1 to n. I don't remember how many elements are inside, but these elements are retrieved from the services layer that is uh, provided by a remote service. So everything everything is baked onto this onto this template and ready to use for you to customize and uh, make it ready for whatever application you want to to build. And uh, in the tutorial document, I explain everything in the structure of the of the template. For example. Uh, what's the, uh, let me find it, what's this composition uh, class, what does it do, how to configure it, everything is here for you to understand and learn and modify it. For example, we have the composition root uh, that has the configure services, get service URL, here you have all the explanation of what it does and how you can configure to create your own application. But uh, since we don't have enough time to put this into practice, uh, we will go directly to the outcome, to the results. We will make the same we did with the other application and we'll build the application for you to see what it's doing. What does it do? Okay, I think you are too shy. <laughs> you haven't asked anything yet. But in the, in the meanwhile, this is compiling our application. 
Yes, if you, if you want to uh, make a question, ask a question, you can write it on the chat or you can raise your hand and we will give you some audio so you can speak. Uh, uh, but yeah, <laughs> let's see how, how we okay. go. Yes, that's it. I encourage you to do it. Okay, we have the applications running. Let's check as they are loaded on screen. Okay, we have a lots, lots of windows going, going on. Okay, let me explain what's the deal with this application. Okay, we'll minimize them in order to understand what's going on. Okay, this is the application. How it works? It works selecting an image from here. For instance, okay, let's pick an image. I don't really know where to find an image here. For instance, okay, let's select this, this photograph. Okay, what the application does is to send this image to a remote service that is hosted into the solution in the backend service. It's run here. You see the backend running here. This is the remote service that could be located in Azure or any, any remote system running on any system. And this is the WebAssembly application that is here. Okay. This is the, the WebAssembly version of the application. Okay, you may wonder why I have two applications running here. One is the backend, so the, the service, and this WebAssembly is the server that hosts our application. You see that this has a, a, this port and the service is running on this port. Notice that the server ports match. Okay. As I was trying to explain, we are going to rotate this image, but we will do it the difficult way. We are sending the image and touch to the service to the remote service and the remote service will rotate the image for us and it will uh, send it back to us and we are going to present the result uh, in this part of the of, of the application so once we have selected the the picture just click on rotate and the image is traveling through the wires and going back rotated to our application. Why is this so important? Because, because this, uh, this kind of interaction is the very same interaction you will have in any line of business application. So once you understand that this kind of application is working on Uno you know, platform, not only on Windows, but it also works works in Android. And you can choose to rotate the same way you did. And it works as well. And when you go to the WebAssembly application and 
you get a sample image URL, for instance. One can, this can't be bigger than 4,000 pixels in, in width. Okay, we pull the image size. Uh, let's try with a medium size. Okay, it's a weird molecule image. Okay, let's go to, oh, uh, let's go to our test application and paste the URL, load the image, choose the degrees, and you can see that in any platform, it works the same. The behavior is the same in every application, in, in, in every platform. You can see that it is exactly the same. So you can just design a, a desktop application and make it into a web application without any effort. Uh, this code base is exactly the same for the WebAssembly application, uh, for the Windows Universal application and the Android application. And if we had a, an iPhone, we will see that it does exactly the same in, in the four supported uh, platforms. Uh, don't you think it's, it's wonderful? <laughs> I think it's really, really impressive. And I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so I'm, I'm enjoying so much, enjoying so much that every time I think about uh, making a new application, the first thing I, I think is about Uno you know, platform because it's targeting everything uh, the market uh, needs right now. You need uh, the mobile application, you need the web application, and you may need a, a desktop, desktop application as well. And you get four just with, this, with, with a single code base. And I have a, a last word here uh, because you may have noticed that this speaker is different here. Uh, it's just so that different platforms can be rendered differently. And this is, um, this is made with conditional, conditional shamel. Let's go to this uh, view in the section one. Okay. Let's select the UWP and reload it again so we can see the designer. Okay, this is the designer and the SAML we have says if it's WebAssembly, use this text box. You can notice that this SAML is only rendered in WebAssembly. In WebAssembly, we will have a text box, as you see in the WebAssembly part. Well, I closed the application. Okay, let's start it again. You may see that in WebAssembly, we have a text box, but in the rest of the platforms, we have a button Okay, let's wait for Visual Studio to load every application. Okay, uh, this is only rendered in WebAssembly, and you can see it. This is only rendered in WebAssembly, but not only is this rendered in WebAssembly, we also change the text of this button depending on the platform. How do we do that? Okay, we have the button and 
in WebAssembly, the label is load image. And not in WebAssembly, that means all the rest of the platforms, the label is pig image, as you can see. So in case you're, uh, you, you need a different layout or different color, uh, text size or whatever, you can make it using conditional uh, compilation, some compilation prefixes uh, are defined like that. And well, just uh, some uh, last uh, remarks here. Along with the code, we have a, in, in the tutorial, we have a special appendix um, explaining a bit the basics of reactive UI. Uh, these applications use reactive UI. Uh, it's a very, very interesting and powerful uh, framework to put into practice the reactive programming. And um, it's, it's um, as I suggested, I suggest you to, to try it. It's very easy to understand what's going under under the hood, and in the appendix, if you have any any uh, difficulty, any problem understanding what's going on, I'm providing you a brief explanation of the essentials, uh, the most important parts of reactive UI, and just to show uh, a bit of uh, reactive UI, how it works. Uh, for instance, uh, it's like this. Uh, essentially, your uh, view models should, uh, should inherit from the reactive object, object class and everything is defined in the constructor. So view models are a mere definition of properties and commands. For instance, the browse file uh, command, uh, rotate command, uh, they are all defined here. And for instance, if you are clicking the, the load uh, button and the loading, uh, the button is performing any activity with reactive UI, you can get this um, effect, let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. Whenever you click the button, since we are using uh, reactive UI, the rotate button will become enabled or disabled according to declarative properties in the view model. This makes the view model more robust and uh, easier to maintain. For instance, we are selecting the, the image and the button automatically became disabled. For instance, uh, if I select this image, you have noticed here, if I select rotate, the definition uh, with reactive UI uh, automatically makes that while the command is executing, it will become disabled. So you cannot click it twice. Uh, just uh, mm, click it and, and, and you, will, you will notice. Okay, you see? Rotate is disabled because it's executing the command. You get this for free using reactive UI. So I uh, encourage you, recommend you to, to start uh, learning reactive UI if you uh, haven't uh, taken a look to it yet. And uh, um, you will see that view models become quite, uh, quite small and easy to, to understand. 
And well, the time is up and we didn't have many, many questions, I think. Well, there's a person, there's a Chris that she says that she, well, I, he or she, I don't know, uh, have a couple of questions, uh, but- uh, Okay, fantastic. We'll make at the end of the presentation. So I think that now okay. is uh, time. And please raise their hand. So I will give you uh, audio. Please uh, don't, don't extend too much and try to be concise. Uh, so um, audio is for you, Chris. Hi, hello. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, so my name is Chris Schultz Carvalho. Um, I uh, work in a consulting company where we uh, implement uh, software solutions. Uh, your presentation was very interesting. Um, and my my first question would be, is the UNO platform also considered to be a low code platform? Would you consider it like that? Uh, and second question, is UNO, uh, the UNO platform, also used for enterprises and large enterprises projects? Thank okay. you. Okay, okay. Thanks a lot for your question. Uh, yes, uh, the second one, uh, is this you know platform using enterprise applications the the answer is yes it's being used right now in line of business applications large line of business applications and if you go to the you know platform uh, website you can um, uh, see a list a comprehensive list of the enterprises and the companies that are using it. I'm not sure how to get the list, the, the exact list, uh, but well, here, here you are. Uh, these are one of the companies that are using uh, UNO platform for production uh, right now. Uh, most of them are Canadian companies right now, but there are a lot, I, mean, I know that this list isn't update, updated. And, uh, and I already know that there are many projects uh, right now that are being developed internally. For instance, in here in my company, in my, it, it, I'm uh, in Brabant. Uh, this is a consultancy company too. And we are creating uh, enterprise applications with UNO platform. So it's stable enough to do this kind of application without any problems. And uh, the only problems that you may face are related only to the uh, front, front uh, for the front uh, end of the applications, because uh, everything that, that is running uh, under the hood uh, is strangely sharp. So if your back uh, end service runs perfectly in your application, uh, it will do uh, the same, exactly the same with UNO you know, platform. And uh, excuse me, I, I forgot the, the first the first question. Can you repeat it, please? I'm sorry. One second that I have to give him. Um, okay, okay. Audio. One second. Chris, you're on, you, you can speak now. Thank you very much uh, for the, the answer. My first question was if Uno platform is to be considered a, a low code development platform, can that be considered? Uh, I don't know if you are uh, similar to other platforms that say they are um, low code platforms. Uh, what did you mean by low code? Low, low code means that to in order to develop the application, very little code is actually the, done by the developer. So uh, everything is emulated in dragging boxes and errors and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Uh, well, um, I can speak by my own experience uh, with this kind of, of application life cycle and uh, there are teams that are usually designing the, the views for the front-end part of the applications. 
and there are some other team that does the servicing layer and uh, the back end of the front end uh, application. The back end of the front end application are the view models that aren't views uh, themselves. So uh, if you have noticed, I mentioned three different teams and uh, the three different teams are in charge of different responsibilities. For instance, um, the SAML uh, designing team can uh, design the, the, the look and feel of the application that we did in this part. Uh, if you remember, we have the, the designer here. You, you may just design this part. You, you may have a, a, an expert on SAML or, or a designer making drafts, drafts of the application while the rest of the team is designing the, designing the, the back uh, the backing part of it. So it's not the kind of, of application that is meant to, to uh, be developed like a monolith, but it can be parallelized and uh, you can uh, parallelize to different teams if you, if you flow uh, adapts to it. I don't know if it if it's the the question you you were asking, uh, but if you have if you have any any question or or any comment on on my answer, just say it, and I will be proud to to answer it. I'm not sure oh, if okay. it is answer. Okay, okay. question. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Thank you. Uh, just, just uh, if I may, another another question. Uh, of so course. From from your experience, how fast would you say that using the Uno platform is compared to more traditional JavaScript, PHP, Python, Java um, to create applications? Okay, thank you for your question because it's a very interesting and important question. That, to be honest. Uh, nobody uh, has asked me before, and that's the uh, the key the key point of the of the uh, Uno platform uh, itself. This um, this life life cycle is really 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 fast. I can't I can't compare with any other life cycle uh, we have uh, to date because. The tooling is impressive. As you see, you can design on, on the screen before running in, running anything, and you just have to validate that uh, whatever you are designing on the screen or or whatever the behavior you are designing according to your your logic to your your business logic is is uh, drawn on the screen, and you can run it locally in a, in a Windows Universal application that runs as fast as this and just validating it and in the other in the other platforms so as as long as you have uh, created this this application you get the other three and the tooling is really powerful so you uh, get the exact behavior and you don't have to want, uh, to worry if it's going to look in one way or in another uh, in WebAssembly, if uh, the CSS is well designed, if this button will look differently in, in this platform, you don't have to worry about anything of these problems that uh, most frameworks have. I don't know if you are uh, currently developing with uh, uh, JavaScript uh, frameworks like Angular, or view or whatever, but um, these frameworks are sometimes difficult to set up and difficult to maintain, and the, the dependencies are uh, some, sometimes uh, uh, very difficult to manage. And in this life cycle, in this kind of application, the, uh, the dependencies are handled very easily, and whatever it works for the Windows application, it should, and I, I remark, it should 
work in the rest of applications. Um, the UNO team is doing a huge effort to make everything work the same it does in the Windows counter counterpart. So in this Windows application, um, there you may find uh, that some controls uh, have some issues uh, to date. So currently there are uh, slight problems uh, that I explained in the, in the tutorial and the issues are uh, really minor uh, right now. So expect that these issues uh, will become smaller and smaller uh, over time. So these problems uh, are gone uh, at a future time. Uh, but uh, if, if you are wondering if it's a good idea to start uh, an application uh, with UNO platform, right now, at this current date, uh, I would say that yes, you can, you can start it with a, a degree of confidence. You will only uh, find uh, minor issues, minor issues like um, well, uh, the scroll button uh, is not handled uh, exactly where, like, like I, I want it. Or uh, I don't have a color picker. Uh, this kind of issues is what you will find. But um, any other kind of issues, um, in, in, in even making more complex and more interactive applications will be easier most of times done in other uh, development life cycle. And especially uh, using JavaScript frameworks that tend to be uh, difficult to maintain and difficult to get the desired results. So yes, it's a big yes. And this can, I, I don't have the numbers, but I've developed uh, applications with other frameworks and this, doesn't compare to any of the framework type I've tried before. It's so so um, smooth, and so terse that you can uh, easily double and um, triple your, your your development speed. Okay. Any any question? Any more question? Not at the moment, and I think that we should uh, finish a little bit the webinar uh, to not extend it too much, if you don't mind, uh, Jose Manuel. No problem. Okay, perfect. So in case that anyone wants to ask something uh, in the tweet uh, and the description of the webinar, uh, you can find options to contact Jose Manuel. We will be reaching, we will be in, uh, retweeting and uh, publishing the slides and the video pretty soon. Uh, thanks again, uh, Manuel, uh, for for uh, your time in in this webinar, uh, and I hope that uh, everyone enjoyed. Uh, so hope to see you in the next Conmotion webinar that we will be having quite a lot lately uh, due to the quarantine and the lockdowns in, in several countries in Europe. Uh, so thanks everyone. Thanks Jose Manuel and hope to see you soon. Thank you all Bye. and thank you for attending to, to the webinar. Have a nice day and, and a nice uh, rest of the week. Yeah, and keep safe, keep safe and, and, and that's it. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. I'm gonna finish the recording. Okay, thank you.